Hello everyone and welcome to this video. Today we're going to look at integrating Power Apps and Power BI. And I use the word integration because by default these are two completely separate services. And there's actually very little that, that joins the, the two. So what we're going to do today is have a Power BI report that uses direct query. So it'll be able to refresh or show you the latest data as soon as you refresh. We're going to have a Power App that's going to be able to read information from Power BI and call refresh commands on Power BI in order to show the latest information. So thanks for watching and I hope you find this valuable. First let's have a look at the data that we're going to be working with. And as you can see there's a, a very simple table called expense claim. And we've got four columns in this table. So we've got an ID which is the primary key expense date, expense amount, and then expense category. So the primary key is very important. The moment you update data from Power Apps, you do need a primary key. And if you don't have one, you simply won't be able to update the data source. Um, it'll give you an error. I think the, the exact error is, uh, it actually puts the, the data source in, in a read-only mode. So uh, it might set you off on a wild goose chase thinking that it's an access con access issue or security issue or something like that where it, it does need a primary key if you're going to update the table. Right, let's have a look at our report. Again, it's a very simple report just to show you how this works. And uh, we've got the latest version of the Power BI desktop, which is brilliant. Uh, if you haven't, if you don't have that yet, please make sure that you get it. Um, there's also a few enhancements um, in the way that you can interact with these Power Apps from uh, the reports using the latest version of the desktop. Right, so let's go and make sure that we've got the visual. You'll see over here we've got a Power Apps uh, visual already loaded. If you don't have one loaded yet, you can go and click on the ellipsis, say import from marketplace, and then from here you can go and search for Power Apps. So we can go and search for Power Apps and the, we've got it over there. You can add it from here. This is where you go and add it to, to your to your Power BI desktop. Right, once you've got it on on board, you can go and just click on it and then you'll see that it positions it in a phone layout view. So by default, the Power Apps that the Power BI create will be in the phone layout. Um, you can jump through a few hoops to get it into a tablet layout if you really wanted to. Uh, but for the purposes of this demo, I'm just going to keep it in uh, on the on the phone layout. First thing we do need to do is tell that this visual what data we're going to be sending Power Apps from Power BI. Now these two services are these two services I mean Power BI and Power Apps really are completely separate services. So what's happening here is tell Power Apps what data we're going to be working with. So to do that, we're going to go to our expense claim data set, and then we're just going to drag these across into the Power Apps visual over here. So you can actually just go and select them as well. That works as well. Something to keep in mind over here is, is to check for if you have any IDs to make sure that um, in this visual they're not counted. <laughs> that that can really, really cause havoc and uh, allow or cause you to update incorrect data. So you're thinking you're working on one record, but Power Apps actually under the impression you're working on a different one because it's adding and it's calculating the IDs. So let's make sure that that's not happening as well as any other amounts. So I'm just going to keep all of that simple to, to not summarize. All right, so that's looking good. And uh, essentially, we can now go and tell Power BI to create the Power App for us. You can choose an existing app. Uh, just a, a word of warning, if you would like to automatically refresh the, the report um, as soon as data updates in your Power App, you need to create an app from the Power BI desktop or from the Power BI service as well. In previous versions, you had to publish uh, the report to the Power BI service before you could create the app. Now you can actually just create it from the, the desktop as well and it works very well. But you need to create a new app um, if you wanted to refresh the, the Power BI report. If you choose an existing app, 
um, and it is an app that was created from the report then it'll be able to refresh as well um, if not um, if you just use a, another power app something that you created completely outside of power bi um, it doesn't have the hooks installed into the power app in order to talk back to power bi so just keep that in mind and uh, at, you know make sure that you, you plan that correctly just a, one other point that i forgot to mention is the Power BI report that you see in front of you uh, uses direct query and that allows us to automatically refresh the data um, immediately as soon as the, the data changes in SQL. If you run these queries in import mode then you have the, the limits on how many of or then you have to actually do the refresh on a schedule and then it doesn't quite give you the experience that you are looking for or that we are looking for in this instance. All right, so let's go and tell it to create the Power App. It usually takes a second and then it comes up with a pop-up with a warning that it's gonna redirect you. And then typically that happens without issue, like most things on Power Apps. And there is our brand new Power App. First thing you'll see that's different is on the left hand side there is an object called Power BI integration and this is how you know that you are heading in the right direction. So this is the, the thing that makes it for us to receive data directly from the Power BI service as well as send commands to it like refresh for an example. So what you now do with this Power App from here on forward really depends on your purpose for the integration. So if you wanted to just have the ability to add new data, then you'll design a certain type of Power App. If you wanted to be able to just edit individual records, then it'll be another Power App. Um, in our case, we're going to have one with a gallery where you can actually browse through the records that, uh, that it, after it is being filtered by Power BI. And then also select a record, edit that record, as well as adding a new record. Right, so let's start uh, by implementing good practices and renaming um, our controls to something that'll make sense. Let's rename the gallery to Gal Welcome and our screen to uh, Welcome Screen. Right, next um, we want to just make this gallery look a little bit better. So let's go and tell it that it should use a padding of five and let's give it a full if you don't talk RGBA you can just go and say light gray right so that's looking good let's go and remove that separator line and and then I think that should be good for now we also like to just at the moment all of these um, arrows are showing so let's go and set it so that only the one shows that's currently uh, for the for the item that's currently selected so we're going to go and say change the visible property for that to this item dot is selected and if you now run this you'll see that uh, that's doing what we want it to do right so um, let's just add more data so it's just easier to see what we're working with so let's add a label and you'll see that it now automatically picks up the fields that we passed it past the visual from power bi so if we go and say um, expense amount which is what we're looking for in this example but for now i'm just gonna put it down there all right so now let's add another screen and uh, choose a form template screen and uh, let's rename this to edit screen and let's first connect this to data right going back to the gallery you'll see that in the items property for this gallery it's currently pointing to the power bi integration which is this object over there uh, dot data and that's how it gets the data. At this point in time, um, this Power App is not connected to any other data sources whatsoever. So if we wanted to this Power App to also update the data and not only browse the data, we'll have to also add the data source. 
So on the new data source view on the left, let's go and go to connections, then scroll down to SQL, select the SQL database. And then if you don't have a connection, you'll just have to click on uh, all connections and then add it. Uh, so we're going to add the connection to that table. There we go. So that's added successfully. And you'll now see it at the top um, under in your app. So let's go back to our tree view on the left and then go back to our form, the edit form. You'll see that at the top, the data source is currently set to blank and we want to go and change this, right? So we want to change this to our new the SQL server or the SQL table that we've added. And we can also now go and edit the fields. So we just want to display, you don't need to select the, the key as well. Power Apps is clever enough to know what, you, what you're working with. So you don't have to display that on the form as well. Right, so there we are pretty much good to go. The only other thing I would change at this stage is under item. Um, I'll go and select the welcome screen dot selected. So this is if we're editing an existing item. Then we want to work with uh, the item that's selected on the welcome gallery. And even though it's not in the same data source, the gallery is looking at the Power BI data while the form is looking at the SQL database. But um, it's clever enough to know that it's working with the same record all round because of the primary key. Right, so let's have a look at the top. And first, let's go and give this little X something to do. So for that, we're just going to say we want to navigate back. And we want to use a fade transition. Okay, next we want to go and have the submit button. You'll see that on the at the moment, the uh, on select submits the form. And for this, that's fine. We, we don't want to change that. It still needs to do that. But now we want to do something in addition to this. So we're going to add a semicolon and hit shift enter. And now we're going to call the Power BI integration dot refresh, which is going to just refresh the report um, or the data that you're looking at. And then at the same time after this, we want to navigate to the welcome screen. And we also want to use the fade screen transition. So let's rename this to something that will make a little bit more sense. So say I see submit. And now we also want to hide this. So we want to say this is, should only be visible when the edit form is in the edit mode. So if we go and say edit form dot display mode equals display mode dot edit. Then we want to show that submit button. And uh, obviously, if it's not in edit mode, we want a, a way for it to to be put in edit mode. So let's just create a copy of that icon. So I'm just going to copy and paste that. It's going to move that in place. Going to rename the icon to IC edit. We're going to change the visible property of this to say if it's not edit, then we want to display the IC edit. And at the same time, we want to change the on select statement. So at the moment, this is uh, changing the, the form um, or it's submitting the form. We want to change this to go and say edit the form. So we want to edit form and the form that we want to edit happens to be edit form one. All right, and that's all that we need for the edit icon, except for the fact we might want to change the icon that it displays. And this is pretty new where we can now select a different icon in the same icon control. All right, so we've selected that for the edit icon. It's not displaying at the moment because the form is currently in edit mode. We might just want to rename this title or just actually delete it. We don't need it for this. So we've got everything that we need on the edit form now. So we can head back to the welcome screen. 
and over here we want to do two things still so we want to add an icon so if we go to insert icons let's add a, a little plus sign and this will allow us to add a new record and on select we're going to say new form and the form that we want to call is edit form one and then we want to navigate to the edit screen and we want to use the cover right transition and that should work well it's going to copy the uh, transition or the navigate because I'm going to use it just now as well and I'll be using that in the gallery to say what happens when somebody selects one of these items so let's just uh, go onto that little icon over there and say currently that's set to when that selected um, it should select the parent and if I have a look at the hierarchy it's going to select the gallery so now on the gallery we can say that on select, in other words, when something is selected, we want to first make sure that the form is in view mode. So we want to say view form and then edit form one, semicolon, and shift enter to add a new line. And then we're just going to paste that navigate uh, command in there to go to that screen. So at this stage, let's go and save the app and also publish it. It's important that uh, it should be published in order for the changes to reflect. And if I go back to my Power BI report, you'll see that it is showing you the latest version of the Power App, which is amazing. Um, some of the stuff don't work quite as nicely on the desktop though, so just make sure that it is published. So I'm just going to publish this to a workspace online and now launch it directly. So let's go and have a look at the, the data and uh, from first glance everything seems to be in order let's go and have a look if uh, what happens when we slice and dice this info um, you'll see that as i select these categories the power app responds accordingly um, and this is because the gallery is actually showing the data that is sent to it from the power bi report through that power bi integration object which is uh, quite cool so filtering the data is only part of the trick. Let's go and add some new data. Let's go and say 4,000 Rand. I think uh, subscriptions are running a bit low. So let's run 4,000 Rand for subscriptions. Let's get the spelling right. And let's go and say 4th of August. And let's go and save this and the data should automatically update. And there you go. So all of that is working exactly as planned. And I'm sure that you'll be able to use this in your projects going forward. Thank you for watching. Please let us know if you have any feedback or any questions or suggestions. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please do so. And uh, comment and like and share. Tell your friends. And I hope to see you in the next video. Have a good day. Bye-bye.